So there's an absolute ton of videos and stuff online about rotation matrices and I just thought I'd have a go at explaining them because there's so much nonsense in a lot of these videos that um, it's really quite insane that you start watching these videos about rotation matrices and they start pulling these sines and cosines out of everywhere and after about two minutes you're thinking what the hell is this all about and how did all this get involved in my rotation matrix because um, it doesn't really have to be involved in it at all and I don't know why people um, try and do that um, so this is going to be an explanation of um, a two by two like a 2d rotation matrix uh, and how it works and how you can think about how it works um, without getting any angle nonsense involved at all so you can just think about the matrix itself and what it does to the thing that you're transforming and how it does that rotation and what what that actually means um, so there won't be any angles or any other garbage like that for you to worry about here the first thing you do have to worry about is this is my space that I'm going to rotate. Here's a little, I've drawn a little shape that I might want to rotate. Um, but essentially I can rotate the whole space. I don't need to just rotate that shape. I can rotate any point in this space. Um, I've got my X and Y axes. Y goes up, negative Y goes down, negative X goes left, and positive X goes to the right. And what I have done, and these are the things I will need, is my two basis vectors. Um, and I've got my red vector, which I've uh, pointed in the same direction as the positive x-axis, and I've got my blue vector, which I've pointed in the same direction as my positive y-axis. So I've drawn them kind of at the origin, but it doesn't, they're not really, because they're the vectors, they don't have a position. They're just, I've just drawn them there to kind of make it, I think it makes more sense to draw them there, but you could draw those anywhere. They're, they're just, they're, these are my two basis vectors, and by definition, they are, uh, they are length one. So I've defined this to be length one and I've defined that to be length one. So I think they're really the only criteria for these that my t I need two basis vectors and they are going to be length one and that's all I'm going to say about them. They, they don't necessarily have to be like pointing in certain directions. They can be in any direction you want. Your space can be any shape you want but usually it's this like everything's very square like this and they'll usually be pointing in these directions that you see like that. So that's the important part here. I have two basis vectors and I, I'm going to shove these basis vectors into a matrix and I'm going to use that to do my rotation. Um, so how do I do that? Well, here's my, um, here's my matrix here. I've got a two by two matrix and I've put the values A, B, C, D in them. And as you can see, I've colored them. So you can see that I'm putting the components of my red vector, the one that's pointing along my x-axis currently. I'm putting those into that column and the uh, components of the blue vector I'm putting into this, this column here. So I've, I've formed this two by two matrix out of my two basis vectors and I can multiply those by any point in, the, in, this, in this surface, like any point here. It could be something on the shape or it could be something else. Uh, I've called that x, y, but I can multiply it by any point and I can get out a new point. And in this case, it's going. It's going to be a rotation. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm actually. I'm actually using this matrix to form a rotation. And here's how I actually do that multiplication. So what I do is I take the. I take the row, the top row, and I multiply it by this column that I'm, I'm inputting here for this um, x y. So I get a times x plus b times y. And then I do the same thing for the bottom row. I take the bottom row, and I multiply it by that column, to get this component out here. So I get c times x plus d times y. So that's essentially um, my output from this matrix multiplication by any point in my surface. And um, for those of you uh, who've done a lot of like um, 3D math or 2D math or whatever, or video game math, you'll notice that this is actually a dot product. Each one of these is actually a dot product. So once I've done that, I can actually plug in down here, I'll plug in the actual real values for this. So my red vector here, my red basis vector, it goes one along, because I've defined it to be one, it goes one along uh, in this direction and none along in the y direction. So this is a one length uh, red vector and I've just plugged the numbers in there and I've done the same thing for the blue vector. It goes nowhere in the x direction and it goes one in the y direction. So I've plugged those numbers in there and there's my 
imaginary point on the plane, the point that I can multiply. So I'm going to do that multiplication here. And as you can see, for this particular set of my basis vectors, my uh, my original basis vectors, if I multiply this out, I just get back the point that I put in. So in my in my original case here, um, multiplying by this um, matrix won't change anything. So this is our, my identity matrix. It acts like a one in multiplication. If I multiply anything by one, it's just going to come out with the same thing. So how does that really help me? Well, what I can do is then all I need to do to get a rotation is just change these basis vectors. So I'll just here, I've just drawn some new basis vectors, which as you can see, I've kind of rotated. So I, I've kept the, like, the distance between them the same and I've just, I've just rotated them around. So now my red vector, which used to point right, now points up. And my blue vector, which used to point up, now points left. So what I can do there is I can plug those new basis vectors into my um, two by two matrix. And now if I multiply anything out by that, I will actually get a rotation by the same amount that I rotated the basis vectors. So this is pretty cool. I mean, I've multiplied it all out there and showed that actually the output is always going to be minus minus y x, but that's not really that important. The important part is is that to realize that the the basis vectors have been moved somewhere. They've not been moved technically. You don't move a vector, but they've been rotated. So anything that I I multiply by that matrix that I form from those will also be rotated. And it could be I could like multiply out the points in this in this uh, shape that I've drawn and I would get these new points out here but I could similarly just multiply any point inside the shape or even any point outside of the shape and I'll get a new point somewhere in this surface and to actually get your head around what's going on there is um, I've just drawn out two diagrams here this first one down here is just what happens when I multiply the point by the original um, my original basis vectors which are these ones here right red to the right and blue going up and then this other one is what happens when I multiply the rotated one. So in the original case, let's just take this corner down here as the example. This corner is two like basis units along. So uh, I take two of my basis units and I go along there like that from the origin. So that gives me that vector. And then I add them to its one and a half basis of the blue units. So that's one and a half of these. I add that one and a half of these to that vector because remember I'm adding these. So I'm just adding these two things together and I actually get out the same point that I put in, which is exactly what we saw before that I should be getting out the same point that I put in. So really what I'm doing is I'm just adding these two vectors together, taking this point and I'm multiplying it by the components of that, by, by these component vectors that I've got, these basis vectors, and it's just giving me back the same point. So now, in this diagram here, I'll do the same thing, but with the rotated basis vectors. And we can see what happens here. So again, I go two along in my x direction, and I'm going to multiply that by my red vector. Now the red vector now goes up. So I have to go two up from the origin. So I go two up there. Uh, and then I'm going to go the other component, which is the y component at this point, is one and a half multiplied by the blue vector. And the blue vector now goes left. So I go one and a half left. And I get this new point here. And if I continue to do that for all the points, I end up with this new rotated shape. So that's what a two by two rotation matrix is. There's no absolute nonsense to think about here. It's just an incredibly simple thing. You're actually just putting vectors into, um, into this matrix and you're just adding these vectors together when you do this multiplication by a point to get your rotation. It's really not very complicated and it should be quite easy to understand. So when I see all these other videos that are like full of this, like, oh my God, we've got to work out whether we're right handed or left handed and all this kind of nonsense. It, it really doesn't come into it at all to, to understand the very simple concepts. You should not have angles or left handed and right handed in your head and all this kind of stuff. You, you need this kind of diagram in your head to say, oh, actually, these are just vectors and I'm going to get out a point multiplied by these vectors. So it's nothing more complicated than that. So if you want to understand what rotation matrices are, then get this diagram in your head and get rid of all the sines and cosines and you'll probably have a much better time of it all.